It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has conquered. And Satan's just a laughing. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Waterfront Church. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes this morning. This is Easter Sunday morning, and we celebrate with great joy the fact that the Lord is risen. Good Friday has gone. This is Easter Sunday, and we're going to enjoy a wonderful hymn as we begin our service this morning. And the hymn is Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah.
Okay, we're now going to have a, a Bible reading and a prayer, and we're going to visit the home of Linda and Jonathan Morgan. Linda's going to bring us the Bible reading, and Jonathan is going to pray. This morning's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10, and I'll be reading from the NIV. So it's Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, at the dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. We pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, in these uncertain times, Lord, your word tells us that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, that you remain the same, and Lord, that you never leave us or forsake us. Lord, as the women went to that tomb that morning and heard those immortal words on that Easter Sunday, he is not here, but he is risen. So Lord, is with hope in our hearts this morning to know that you are alive and are alive forevermore. Lord, for so many who are feeling isolated and anxious this morning and at this present time, Lord, I pray that they will know your strength, your comfort. Lord, that they will know your peace at this particular time. And Lord, we are grateful for those who are serving on the front line, those who are working night and day. Lord, those care workers, the doctors and the nurses, Lord, we pray for those this morning, that they will know a strength, Lord, that, Lord, they will know something of your peace, Lord. Lord, that as they try to overcome this virus, Lord, we pray for those who are searching for a cure, Lord, for uh, a cure for this virus, Lord, that we just pray, Lord, your wisdom and your strength would be their portion, Lord, today. And also I pray for, for those who are ill in our fellowship also, I just pray, Lord, that you will just be near to them, Lord, that they will not be afraid, they will not feel anxious, Lord. But Father God, they will know that hope and assurance that comes from knowing you because you are alive. And so, Lord, we can say this morning, like in the words of that hymn, Oh, Father God, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And because I know, I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Bless us this day, Lord. Bless your word to us, Lord as it's brought to us. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Okay, well, we have a wonderful opportunity now just to join together and worship collectively as we listen to some wonderful worship songs. I would encourage you to join in with them and release something of praise and worship unto the Lord. Amen. is alive. Oh 
darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your
February the 27th, 1991, at the height of Operation Desert Storm, an American mother by the name of Ruth Dillow received a very sad message from the Pentagon. It stated that her son, Private Clayton Carpenter, had stepped on a mine in Kuwait and was dead. Ruth Dillow later wrote, I can't begin to describe my grief and shock. It was almost more than I could bear. For three days I wept. For three days I expressed anger and loss. For three days people tried to comfort me, to no avail because the loss was too great. But three days after she received this message, the telephone rang. The voice on the other end said, Mom, it's me. I'm alive. Ruth DeLow said, I couldn't believe it at first, but then I recognized his voice, and he really was alive. It turned out to me that the original message was a mistake. She said, I laughed, I cried. I felt like turning cartwheels because my son, whom I thought was dead, was really alive. I'm sure none of you, she said, can begin to understand how I felt. I don't think any of us listening this morning have an idea of what that poor mother went through and felt during those agonizing days, and neither have any of us experienced her joy of three days later. However, some who walked the pages of the New Testament would have understood how she felt, because they too had experienced the same emotions themselves. One day, They watched their best friend, their teacher, their Lord being nailed to a cross. They witnessed his pain as he cried out, I thirst, and my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? They listened as he finally bowed his head and said, It is finished, and Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. They watched his body being taken down from the tree. They saw him being buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. All their hopes, all their dreams were buried with him. Friday and all day Saturday they mourned, until finally On the first day of the week, early in the morning, the Scripture says, some women made their way along the path that led to the tomb, wondering who would roll the stone away for them. But when they arrived, they found that the stone had already been rolled away. And an angel said to them, you are looking in the wrong place. You are looking for Jesus among the dead. He is not dead. He is alive. He is risen even as he said. He is risen. And that is exactly what Christians all over the world celebrate and rejoice this morning. The Savior is alive. When all the evidence is in, we are convinced this morning that Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead, 
and what a difference the resurrection has made. The 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians is the great resurrection chapter. And Paul writes, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that He has appeared to Peter and then to the Twelve. After that, He appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then He appeared to James, and then to all the apostles, and at last of all, he appeared to me as uh, to one abnormally born. This is a fantastic resurrection chapter. Paul in this chapter reminds the Corinthian believers that if Christ is not alive, then their preaching is in vain, their faith is useless, and their deceased, deceased loved ones are lost. Their hope is gone. They themselves are liars, and they are still in their sin. But, says Paul, Christ has been raised from the dead. He says, for us in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. This gospel of the resurrection transforms lives and brings hope to mankind. The angel said, he is not dead, he is alive. He is risen, even as he said Easter. What a difference it has made. You see, the resurrection is fundamental to the Christian faith. The resurrection was foundational everyday preaching for the apostles in the early church, and it should be for us today as well. Jesus is alive. Let me state three biblical facts concerning the resurrection. First of all, Christ's resurrection ensures our regeneration. Peter says, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here, he explicitly connects Jesus' resurrection with our regeneration or our new birth. Were it not for the resurrection, there would be no regeneration, no new creation. But thank God we have been born again because Jesus is alive. Then secondly, Christ's resurrection ensures our justification. Paul says, was put to death for our transgressions and raised for our justification. When Christ was raised from the dead, it was God's declaration of approval on God's work of redemption. Hey, you and I this morning, we are justified before a thrice holy God because Christ has died and Christ has risen. Hallelujah. And thirdly, Christ's resurrection ensures that we will receive perfect resurrection. The New Testament several times connects the resurrection of Jesus with our resurrection. Listen to the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. He says, And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by His power. You see, of the triumphant resurrection of Christ, Robert Lowry wrote in the 19th century, Death cannot keep His prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, 
Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. My friend, Jesus is alive, and because he lives, we also live. And because he experienced resurrection by his power, one day we shall experience resurrection also. So rejoice this Easter Sunday. Jesus is alive. It was George Philip who said, to look at some people's faces and bearing in church on a Sunday, we would get the impression that they still believe that Jesus is dead. Hey, church at home, I trust you're smiling because Jesus is alive. Friends, rejoice, smile, my Savior lives. Let me give you this morning seven reasons why we are certain of the resurrection. First, because the Old Testament foretold it. Listen to the prophecy of David in Psalms 16 and 10 which Peter quoted on the day of Pentecost. You will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see corruption. The Old Testament, we foretold the resurrection of Jesus. And so we can be certain because of Old Testament promise. We can be certain because Jesus himself taught it. Did he not say, destroy this temple? and I will rise it up again. And thank God, on the third day, he rose in triumph. We are confident and we are certain because the angels announced it. When the woman came to the tomb on that first resurrection morning, the angels told them, He is not here. He is risen. My friends, the angels declared... Jesus is alive. We are certain, fourthly, because Christ himself had proven it. The resurrection, the resurrected Christ, rather, appeared to Mary on that first resurrection morn and said, why are you crying? The resurrected Christ appeared to the disciples gathered behind closed doors and said, peace be with you and receive the Holy Spirit. The resurrected Christ appeared to doubting Thomas and said, stop doubting, but believe. The resurrected Christ appeared to Peter at the beach barbecue and asked him, Peter, do you love me? And went on to instruct him, feed my lambs. The resurrected Christ appeared to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus and gave them the most wonderful of biblical expositions which resulted in them saying, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened the Scriptures to us? These are just a few examples and Luke in Acts 1 and 3 says this, After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Yes, we are convinced of the resurrection because Christ himself had proven it. And fifthly, we are convinced of the resurrection because the apostles proudly proclaim, proclaim it. You see, when you read the book of Acts and the epistles uh, that have been written, you find that the apostles went everywhere and they proclaimed the message of the resurrection and they taught the resurrection in their letters. You see, the resurrection was Peter's message on the day of Pentecost. Listen to him. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death, nailing him to a cross. But, he said, God raised him from the dead. Paul preached the resurrection to a group of idol worshippers at Mars Hill in Athens. And Paul reminds the believers at Corinth, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who fall asleep. We are convinced of the resurrection because the apostles 
proudly proclaimed it. Sixthly, we are convinced of the resurrection because Christian worlds worldwide believe it. We are not the only group in Swansea. We are not the only church in Swansea who believe and preach and teach the resurrection of Christ. Christians of all persuasions, of all nations, of every tribe, color, and language believe and proudly proclaim this morning that their Savior is alive. This is a day, you see, Easter resurrection morn is a day when Protestants and Catholics and Orthodox Christians sing from the same hymn sheet, Jesus is alive. Yes, from the Eastern Orthodox to Roman Catholic believers, from conservative Reformed churches to liberal charismatic believers, the song this morning rings out loud and clear from our homes, Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. And then finally, my friends, we are convinced that Jesus is alive, convinced of the resurrection message, because I know it. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. As a young Christian, one of the first Pentecost conventions that I went to at the age of about 18 years of age, I heard a woman sing, and I don't remember much of the hymn that she sang, but the solo that she sang had this line, If God is dead, then who's this living in my heart? And I know he lives, because he lives within my heart. From the age of 17 to 26, I worshipped at Carmel Apostolic Church in the village of Tumble. And every Easter Sunday, without fail, we sang hymn number 204 from that blessed red book, the Redemption Hymnal. And these words of Samuel Medley is so appropriate for us on this particular Easter Sunday with all our anxieties regarding this pandemic. And with his words, I close my Easter message. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. What joy the blessed assurance gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my everlasting head. He lives to bless me with his love. He lives to plead for me above. He lives my hungry soul to feed. He lives to help in time of need. He lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives all blessing to impart. He lives and grants me daily breath. He lives, and I shall conquer death. He lives my mansion to prepare. He lives to bring me safely there. He lives all glory to his name. He lives my Savior still the same. What joy the blessed assurance gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Me own for the Mrenur and Veu. Amen. Well, what another privilege we have to share communion together. And what a day. What a day to be reminding ourselves this is Easter Sunday. The Lord is risen indeed. And we are here this morning and uh, we have the opportunity to remember our precious Savior, in the breaking of bread. I want to read just a few verses from Luke's account. We're in Luke chapter 22, 
and uh, verse 14. And this is what Luke records for us. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took a cup. When he had given thanks, he said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. I love Luke's account there, and there are different interpretations where the Lord says, I have earnestly desired. Despite what was on the horizon, there was a longing, a passion, a desire to do this with his disciples. And what a profound act it is. And yet I'm amazed at its simplicity. Simple bread, simple juice, drop of wine. And yet it speaks to us. And it speaks to us once more this morning of a Savior who died that we might have life. And this morning, resurrection morning, what a hope we have, a hope that excites us and a hope that thrills our soul. Let's pause now then. Perhaps it's been a hectic time for many of us, but this is a time for contemplation, for reflection, just for considering what it is that we are doing. How precious is our Savior. How wonderful his death. How magnificent his resurrection. How assured is his second coming. For we do this this morning in remembrance of him until he comes. Let's just pause and then I will give thanks and we'll share bread and wine together. Father, once more, we just thank you for the opportunity we have as we just gather together to remember you in the breaking of bread. And what a day on which to remember you. Easter Sunday, resurrection morning. Death could not keep its prey. Jesus, my Savior, he tore the bars away. Jesus my Lord. And this morning, we echo and we reflect on what you have done, and we tell you once more how much we love you this morning and what you mean to us in our lives. So, Father, we pray you'll bless the bread to us as we break and share it. Bless the wine as we drink it in remembrance of you. May we just this morning sense something afresh of what it means for what we are doing. With the hymn writer who says, what it meant to you, the Holy One. Make me understand it and help me to take it in. Do that this morning as we remember you in the breaking of bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And on that night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread gave thanks, blessed it, and said to them, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat together in remembrance of him. And then in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us drink together this morning as we remember how precious 
our Lord is. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege once more of partaking of bread and wine in remembrance of you. We thank you for what you instituted for us, mindful that sometimes our memory is not what it should be. How could we forget you? And yet, Father, sometimes we can be prone to forget. And so we do this as asked and instructed by you in remembrance of you. And I pray this morning, Father, as we have each partaken, that we will have sensed something of your presence in our homes, wherever we are met, something of the presence of God, blessing our hearts, stilling our hearts with the peace of God that passes all understanding. Do that, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us this morning for worship on this wonderful resurrection morn. And our closing hymn this morning is that hymn, The Greatest Day in History, Jesus is Alive. Greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me Sing it out Jesus is alive The empty cross, the empty grave Life eternal, you have won the day Shout it out, Jesus is alive He's alive Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now is, and evermore shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in the Son. I believe in the risen one. 
I believe I overcome by the power of His blood. Amen. Covered in sin and shame I heard mercy call my name He rolled the sun away Amen, amen I'm alive, I'm alive because He lives Amen Cause he